CISPA has passed in Congress, and some are calling it the death of the Fourth Amendment. It passed overwhelmingly 288 to 127 in favor of the bill after just two days of debate and discussion on the House floor. Now what will happen is CISPA will allow private entities or companies like Facebook or Google or even your mobile phone to share your personal, private, and sensitive data with the government and its agencies with very little checks. It's, it's if you're considered a cyber threat, but what constitutes that? It's unclear what will happen when it moves over to the Senate. Maybe it'll get shelved, and it's unclear, well, President Obama has threatened a veto. Well, I mean, uh, this is nothing new. Mm -hmm. CISPA has passed in the House before. So your data can be handed over without a warrant, without you even knowing, and with no legal option for you to fight back. And it, this, is, this also includes information like your banking information or your health information. It's everything. Whatever is deemed a cyber threat. Now, that's interesting to me that it's a cyber threat. It's not defined the same as a national security threat. Well, they use uh, terms uh, relating to children. So we're, we're protecting the children, we're cutting down right, on right. childhood pornography and kidnapping and online predators because no one can stand up and argue against that. Mm -hmm. It's universally understood well, this, that we have to protect the children. This is a trick that happens all the time. Exactly. Um, the, the problem is that they're not even giving any compromise on this. No. So Alan Grayson, a Florida Democrat, proposed a one-sentence amendment to CISPA. All he wanted was one more sentence in there that would say that FBI, Homeland Security, NSA, other agencies would need to secure a warrant in accordance with the Fourth Amendment before searching databases. That's it. No, and they unequivocally said no. No. No dice. We're taking it as it is. It would also amend the National Security Act to allow U.S. intelligence services to hand over classified information to entities and people who have no security clearance. None. So I don't understand what the point of that is. But when you think about it, it all boils down to what? Of course, money. Now what this would do is mainly big defense contractors are aiming to provide safety and security to whatever these cyber threat boogeymen are. Um, this is this is the new big Defense Department cash cow. Right. When we were in, you know, when Iraq just started, it was all about those, uh, you know, and Blackwater mercenaries, the the four higher uh, militaries, mm -hmm. and they got all of the government funds. They had all these, you know, guns and and weapons and jeeps and tanks and whatnot. And now the new thing is these cybersecurity companies. And that brings us to Representative. Mike Rogers. Who originally introduced CISPA yes. November 30th, 2011. Now, he is the guy, um, you may have heard of him, referring to people who oppose CISPA as 14-year-olds who live in their mother's basements. Uh, the Silicon Valley CEOs support this bill. The people who are in the business of prosperity on the internet think this is the right approach. I mean, so I, people well, on the internet, if you're you know, a 14-year-old tweeter in the basement, I'm, you know, as my... Uh, Took my nephew. I had to work work him over a lot on this bill. Okay. I have my <laughs> own basement, Mike Rogers. Yeah, but um, he has done a lot of fear mongering in this, and he hasn't even be, be, been able to keep his story straight on whether CISPA would give information to the NSA. Hint: Yes, it is. That's um, exactly what this is about. He's been a great proponent to CISPA, and he's yeah. also made it claims that no company or corporation opposes CISPA, which is untrue. Untrue. Reddit. Mozilla. Mozilla. Automatic. Though other corporations do, like our favorite pals at AT&T and Time Warner Cable. And Verizon. And, and IBM. Comcast, and Comcast. And all Intel. the guys that already have all your data and want to sell it to people. Yeah, I mean, there's money to be made. Yeah. But what's the biggest scam, Kim? Well, it turns what's out the kicker? that Representative Mike Rogers' wife stands to make a great amount of money off of this. How much money? Christy Clemens Rogers, until recently, was the president and CEO of Aegis LLC, a security defense computer company whom she helped to secure a $10 billion contract to help protect the government against cyber threats. What? what? Are you telling me that this guy who introduced this bill, his wife's former company stands to make a $10 billion payday? Yes, the State Department somehow found out about this woman heading the company and decided, let's give them $10 billion to fix this problem that we made up to scare you. 
Well, that seems legit. Yeah, that seems real. I don't real. see any problems, no red flags and there. And she's also contributed a lot to the fear-mongering against cyber threats. She wrote an article for Washington Life magazine all about evil hackers trying to steal information from you. And she also contributed to the, this idiotic stereotype, quote, as hackers being the teenager in his or her parents' basement with bunny slippers and Mountain Dew. Classic. You guys get everything. Give them all the money. I think you should leave my bunny slippers out of this, Christy. And my Mountain Dew. Now she is the managing director of federal government affairs and public policies for a big lobbying group. That sounds nice. Which means she could set it up not only for this money to start funneling into cybersecurity, but direct it towards her specific company. Yeah, so this is corruption upon corruption. If someone you know is personally involved in a case, if you're oh, a judge, yeah. what happens? If judges or lawyers have a vested interest in a case, if they're you know personally affected by the outcome of the case, they have to recuse themselves. Why was no one recused? By law, because they don't have these types of laws. You can, your husband can introduce a bill into the Senate that makes you lots and lots and lots of money based on, I don't want to say false information, but misinformation. Mm -hmm. And then there's no, no checks I and would, balances I would for definitely that. Say if the House passes it and the Senate passes it and the president, the president doesn't veto it, then that becomes law. So this is an obvious conflict of interest to anyone who's obvious. not them. What's funny though, um, this was pointed out in a Tech Dirt article a few months ago, Rogers claimed that it was all so scary, all the cyber threats were so scary, that he couldn't sleep at night until CISPA passed due to an unusual source threatening us. This all came out around the same time as his wife's fear-mongering article. I don't know, turns out when you share a bed with someone, maybe you talk about the same things, maybe, uh, maybe you have the same interests. It's all really disgusting how much it crosses over and how much corruption there is and how no one is talking about this. And My how God. not even remotely subtle it all is. No, it's all right there. It's, yeah, it should be evident so to everyone involved. This should be at least highly questionable to the public. I hope it spreads further and I hope we understand what CISPA is all about. Hint, money.